what's the first time you performed? We talked about your first barrel. What's the first time you performed in front of an audience? And we are edgy. The, the first time I performed in front of an audience? Yeah. Uh, well, I used to have a, a punk band in high school. We were called Limber Chicken, and we would... Um, a punk band? Were... Jack Johnson, yeah. the king of yeah. chill, was a punk rip man. Yeah, I used to love Fugazi and Minor Threat and The Descendants and like uh, all what kinds your, of stuff. What, what was your band? Limber Chicken. Limber Chicken, yeah. We never <laughs> put it. We were just... We only performed, I think, three times. They were all at like graduation parties and house parties and stuff. But we practiced a lot in the garage, you know. And uh, so... Those were the first shows I'd ever done. Um, was just playing at, at like kind of backyard parties, and when I was a senior in high school. And, and what about when you went on stage for the first time as a solo artist, when it's just you and your guitar and some lights and a crowd, thinking, right, what's this guy got for us? Yeah, that was more nerve wracking because um, in the punk band, I didn't even sing. I was like the guitar player, and I could just be off on the side. And then I had another band in college where I. I used to write all the songs because that first band was a cover band. The second band in college, I, I wrote all the songs or most. I mean, we did a couple like as a band, but I would kind of start almost all of them. And some of them I just bring kind of done and we'd play them. But another guy would sing them. He had more confidence and a better voice than me. And, and so he would sing them and I would get the kind of walk from the side and, and I could still open my eyes because I wasn't the center of attention. And so I could kind of check people out and see if they dug the song or not i think yeah. i learned a lot during that time about songwriting some of the songs off my first record were written during that time like the song flake and drink the water and um different uh trying to think of some of the other ones posters was on the first record and i wrote all those kind of while i was with my first that band in college and then i started making surf movies years went by there was like a little break where i didn't perform at all or think about it and then and then I started getting kind of some attention again because some of the songs were in the surf movies and people would, every time I'd surf and I'd meet some kids, whether it was in Australia or France, or wherever it was, they would, they'd heard these record. I guess I was making recordings through that whole time, but I wasn't performing. And yep. people would always ask me, you want to come over and if you come play in my living room, I can get enough teenage kids around to basically uh, fill up this, my living room. So I started doing a few of those when I'd be traveling, making the surf movies. In the living and, rooms of people. Yeah, I mean, just a few. I can remember a couple of times. I do remember one time in, in Australia, we were like near Sydney and um, we were heading to make a surf film, but we had a day or two in Sydney. And um, I can't remember, I mean, it was literally in 98 or 99. And so I, <laughs> but I remember just playing to a bunch of, you know, I knew some of them from the, from the surf and stuff and other ones I didn't know, but those were kind of the flirting with playing shows because it was barely a show people would listen for a minute and then they would just start talking it would turn into a party um but those those little kind of like transitional moments are nice it's good to have you, you, there's like a moment or two where you can tell like oh people are actually responding to these songs and then you lose your their attention but you kind of know there's a little something there and you, and you get a feeling sometimes when, when one works and i don't know it just steers you in the direction of what you want to do next time and then I started playing little clubs in uh, Santa Barbara, where I was living at the time, and um, with some friends, and those those were a lot of fun. And people, I guess, people started kind of sometimes being quiet when you'd play. Like usually you'd play in a bar and everybody would talk, you know. And I was used to that, and it's kind of comfortable because you don't feel like anybody's listening. And then <laughs> there was a thing where I'd play, and especially like certain songs, and people would kind of get quiet, and I could feel which songs people were listening to. And then more and more people started coming to those, you know, and it, uh, yeah, I just remember it. I remember kind of always thinking like, I'll ride this wave as long as it goes, but I don't ever want to force it. It was like, I didn't really have a lot of ambition because I love making the surf films and I thought I had a whole career path already. And um, with the music, I just, yeah, I just kept growing. It was always strange. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We appreciate your support. Now, if you want to hear the full podcast, you can just click on the link directly below. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, which would be fantastic, bang, click right there. And if you want to see more clips, highlights, and updates from the Howie Games, just go that way. Thanks so much. As always, take it easy, and peace and love.